Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Musician Hub podcast series brought to you by Bridger. In this episode, I will reveal everything about publishing. What is it exactly? How does it work? How do publishers get paid? And what are the pros and cons for an artist to be published? Let's jump right in. So to fully understand the role of a publisher, we must go back to its origins. We are talking about people who walked the streets to find musicians and asked them for their scores. Then these same people would knock on music halls' doors to sell them to musical programmers. And despite the changes in the market, the particular function of salesmen for artists has not changed. So if you plan to go with a publisher, we'll tell you everything you need to know to make this collaboration a success. Our first most important question is, what is the purpose of music publishing? So generally speaking, publishing is the step that comes after creating a song. Once you have made your track's lyrics or composition, you can entrust your work to a publishing company that acquires, manages, markets, and promotes it. The overall goal is to get your music broadcast as much as possible, increasing your and the publisher's income, which we all like, right? And they share three resources with you to make this possible. Their professional network, money, and skills as a copyright administrator. Let's dive into these three resources further. So to start the professional network, the first significant benefit when you are starting is that the publishing serves as a way for you to insert yourself into the industry. People who work for a music publishing company belong to a community linked by their profession, where they exchange about the writing and music composition talents they represent. Through this network, ideas for collaboration flow and result, for example, in beat makers straight out of YouTube going into artists' recording studios. The second resource is financing. Because you are the first owner of your work as a songwriter, your publisher is your first investor. Within the publishing contracts, you negotiate an advance and generally a complimentary flat fee, which I will explain in a second. Usually, if you are also a performer, the label comes in after the publishing job. The advance goes directly into your pocket at the signature of the contract in its totality. This budget allows you to live while you are creating. You will have to repay your publishing company during the agreement with the money generated from your tracks. The flat fee that I was talking about earlier is paid during the term of the contract. The publisher manages these funds, but you claim or validate how to spend them. They are used to finance your creative and promotional resources. This could be recording equipment and tours, for example. Logically, you don't have to pay it back as it is an investment of your publishing company that allows you to break through. And the third resource is the administration of copyrights. Last but not least, your publisher helps you administer your copyrights. It registers your work with a collective management organization, CMO, or Performance Rights Organization, PRO, Mechanical Rights Organization, MRO, and soon with Bridger. At the submission phase, it makes sure that all people behind the work agree on the split, and it defends your share of the cake so that it is equal to your work. It also verifies that all your rights are well collected and fights on your behalf if it is not the case. And one thing to note in addition to these skills is that your publisher places your work in audiovisual products, such as commercials, series, films, video games, just to name a few, and then manages the resulting synchronization rights. So to sum up this idea, music publishing companies represent the interests of the people who compose a song. For example, beat makers or lyric writers. They find, buy, administer, market, and promote their creations thanks to three resources. Their professional network, financial resources, and expertise in copyright management. So all of that is really interesting, but how do publishing companies get paid? Well, publishing companies finance their activity through contracts, where you grant them part of your copyright, knowing that typically you share the income like this. 25% for the authors, 25% for the composers, and 50% for the publishers. The more your tracks are commercialized, the more rights they generate and the more money they make, and you too, 
which is great, isn't it? So there are a few different types of contracts that can be signed between songwriters and publishers. There is the Exclusive Songwriter Agreement. It's the primary contract that links the artist to his publishing company. It determines, among other things, who signs, how the parties share the copyright, the duration of the pact, the amounts and terms of the advance and the flat, as well as the model of the assignment contracts and how the licensing agreements are managed. We also have the co-publishing agreement. This contract has to be discussed in addition to the exclusive songwriter agreement if there is more than one publisher. It allows to clearly define who takes care of what and gets how much. In addition, there is the contract signed with the CMO or PRO, MRO, at the time of depositing the tracks. This consists of the buyout agreement, takes up the clauses of the exclusive songwriter agreement, and the co-publishing agreement, if necessary, to specify the sharing of the copywriter split, as well as the distribution of the publishing roles. And then, the contracts which apply to the artists who have their own publishing company. The first is the administration agreement. The artist subcontracts the publishing of a track to a publishing company on an exclusive basis for a specific period. And the second is the sub-publishing agreement. The artist subcontracts to a third party to promote his work in a particular territory and for X amount of time. Often, you entrust the authorizations of diffusion and interpretation to your publishing company. Typically, you share the income like this. 25% for the authors, 25% for the composers, 50% for the publishers. And remember, the more your tracks are commercialized, the more rights they generate, and the more money you get. So, the million-dollar question is how to get published. The job of publishers is to find talent. To catch their attention, you can develop your presence on social networks. Since the pandemic, the pros have been monitoring them more and more due to the lack of concerts. So don't hesitate to live stream on Instagram and YouTube. Don't forget that your online presence goes through neat profiles. You can also participate in venues, festivals, and open stages dedicated to new talent. In the opinion of some publishing pros, it's better to wait for someone to come to you, but it's not the only way. There is, for example, the suitable old method of sitting down in their offices with your demo in hand. This technique can work, but it's better to have a solid fan base before doing this in order to reassure the people you are soliciting. Alternatively, you can use platforms to get in touch with professionals, including publishers. For example, Grover's goal is to share your tracks with them in exchange for their advice at any time in your career. One last tip. You will work closely with your publishing company. This collaboration is crucial in your career because it's the first one. The important thing is that you feel comfortable about it. It may sound banal, but good vibes count, right? So remember, to get published, you need to work on your online presence with neat profiles and an activity representing your artistic DNA. Open stages and contests for new talent. Your network through networking sites like Grover or by knocking on the doors of publishing companies' offices. Well, now you're an expert on the publishing topic. But before we end this episode, here is a quick recap of what you need to remember. Publishing comes after the creation of a song. Once you have created the lyrics or the composition of your track, you can entrust your work to a publishing company. Its objective is to broadcast your music as much as possible, thus increasing your income and theirs. Its three resources to achieve this are its professional network, financing capacities, and expertise in copyright. Thanks so much for listening to the Musician Hub podcast series by Bridger. Remember to stay up to date with our latest news and receive a notification every single time a new podcast episode is out. You just need to follow us on your favorite podcast player and on social media. Thanks so much and talk to you soon. <laughs>